Here's what's happening now. Warm wind, but still not humid. We'll look at when the sweat will finally roll off our foreheads, Karen. All right, Ben, also a powerful scene today right here in Metro Detroit as hundreds turn out to say goodbye to a police officer shot and killed in Dallas. We're talking about a total of 9,000 years of living, a group of seniors reliving their childhood. The values, the same values, that you work hard for what you want in life. You work hard for what you want in life. Oh, it is the question everybody is asking. Did Melania Trump steal Michelle Obama's speech? I'm Karen Drew. Those stories and more right now on First at Four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. And we begin with a story that has everybody talking today. The speech given last night by Donald Trump's wife, Melania. She claimed to write it herself with a little bit of help. But many are accusing her this afternoon of stealing parts of it word for word from a speech given eight years ago by First Lady Michelle Obama. Devin is following this for us in the newsroom. And Devin, this is the story that just is not going away today. Sure seems that way, Karen. Uh, one Trump spokesperson says the similarity in the speeches is just a coincidence. Incidents, but another says, and this is the quote, Melania has been humiliated by poor staff work. Many Republicans and even Democrats seem to agree that Melania Trump delivered a strong speech last night. God bless you and God bless America. Problem is the speech may not have been entirely hers. A key part of her address appears to have been lifted almost verbatim from Michelle Obama's 2008 speech at the DNC. You work, you work hard, hard for, what, for you what you want in life. life. That, your, that word your word is your is bond, your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. you do what do. you say and keep your promise. The campaign says a team of writers worked on the speech, but Mrs. Trump says she wrote it. I wrote it and uh, little, uh, with a little help as possible. Today, Trump's campaign strongly defended the speech. We don't believe there's, there's any thing in that speech that doesn't reflect her thinking. 93% of the speech is completely different. Trump's team says it will not address the issue any further. But the man who used to run the campaign, Corey Lewandowski, says that's not enough and heads should roll. Whoever was the staff person who wrote this speech should be held accountable and should be fired. Tonight, the Trump campaign will try to get back on track. The presumptive nominee will become the official nominee this afternoon. Today's theme, jobs and the economy, make America work again. Trump's daughter Tiffany and son Donald Jr. will tout their father's business record. A critical night for Trump and Republicans after a rocky start. Yeah, it should be an interesting night tonight. Uh, former rivals Chris Christie and Dr. Ben Carson will also take the stage to talk up Donald Trump. And two top Republicans in Congress, Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell, they have both been very critical of some of Trump's rhetoric, but they will be there tonight to try to unify the Republican Party. So a lot more to come. We'll have it for you tonight on Local 4 News. All right. Thank you very much, Devin. You it's bet. going to be another interesting one. Mm -hmm. Well, a reminder, our Kimberly Gill is in Cleveland this week covering the convention. She will have more on the Melania controversy ahead on Local 4 News at 5. Now to some huge new developments in a story that we've been following for months here on First at Four. Today, a judge formally dismissed the charges against Devontae Sanford. He is the young man from Detroit who spent eight years in prison for four murders that were eventually linked to a hitman. With the judge's action today, the case is finally closed against Devante, who was wrongfully caught up in this case since he was just 14 years old. Police officers from around the country joined with everyday citizens of Metro Detroit for today's funeral for Officer Michael Kroll, one of five murdered Dallas police officers. While police formed an honor guard outside St. Robert Bellarmine Catholic Church in Redford Township, area residents stood by to pay their respects to the one-time Wayne County Sheriff's deputy who joined the Dallas police force and was killed by a sniper's bullet earlier this month. It's very emotional. I got to shake the hands of two Dallas officers this morning and it was all I could do not to break down and blubber. So that was that was pretty moving. I just wanted to come down and be respectful because I'm a junior firefighter and we're all family here. Some 200 Dallas police officers came to Michigan for the funeral. Officer Kroll's body was laid to rest at Holy Sepulchre Cemetery in Southfield. After spending the day in courtrooms, former Detroit City Council President Charles Pugh will be spending another night in jail. Today, District Judge Shannon Holmes recused herself 
from a probable cause hearing because she knows Pew. So then, Judge Deborah Langston set Pew's preliminary examination date for August 5th. Pew is charged with criminal sexual conduct with a 14-year-old boy in 2003 when Pew was a TV news anchor. He is jailed right now under a half-million dollar bond. The city of Detroit reached a really big milestone in its fight against blight today with the demolition of the 10,000th vacant building since Mike Duggan became mayor. The mayor was joined today by contractors and residents near the demolition site on Marlow near Grand River and Hubble. While a lot has been accomplished since he took office in 2014, he says a lot more remains to be done. 10,000 houses is a remarkable accomplishment, but we still have 30,000 to go. I mean, the, the magnitude of the blight problem in this city uh, is enormous. Uh, but instead of whining about it, we got to work at it. The mayor says beyond blight removal, he is encouraged by seeing more vacant houses being purchased and renovated throughout the city. Time now for our first look at the forecast. Oh, Ben, it was a really, I'd say, a picture-perfect day today. No complaints. Yeah, it, the humidity definitely is not a problem right now, Karen, but depending on where you are, it's a little bit warmer than other spots. Metro officially is at 87, but you start getting a little bit further to the north. In fact, well, not too much further north. City Airport's only at 79. Pontiac's at 81. Seems to be a little bit more of an influence coming off those east side lakes, so it looks like the closer you are to those big areas of water, uh, the cooler you are this afternoon. A little bit warmer as we get into tomorrow, especially in some of those areas that are uh, north of the city today. Humidity becomes noticeable by Wednesday night and then get ready to sweat on Thursday. We'll look at those 90 degree temperatures coming up, Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. Last week we took you out to Youth Day at Belle Isle. Well, today it was the day for kids at heart. Our Paula Tutman was there as some very special seniors relived some special moments from their past. If you really want a lesson on staying young, You've got to talk to somebody who's more than 80 years old. And do you love twists? All right, keep on twisting. Keep on. There was an air of nostalgia on Belle Isle as the over 80 crowd converged on the island. It is Sunrise Senior Living's annual Step Back in Time picnic, bringing together seniors from all of their local assisted living and memory care centers to bring back the good old days. In all, there are more than 9,000 years of living here. And if you take just a moment, there's a fascinating story with everyone you talk to. Like Rosario, who goes by Ross and remembers coming to Belle Isle 50 years ago with his bride, Therese. It's so nice. And going back in those days, I wish I was going back again. But in a way, yes. In a way, no. We had great days. <laughs> I like that. Today, wow. dancing under the pavilion brought back such sweet memories of 60 years of marriage. What's the secret to growing old gracefully together? You've got to, the greatest thing is forgive and forget and uh, be lovable and treat other people as you like to be treated. Please be true. Music is the reason to stay young and alive. Hmm. And music will keep you both. In other words, and Mary Jane knows the words to every song because she studied music at U of M and has used singing as a way to keep her mind sharp and stay young. She was a widow for many years, but found love again four years ago. Yes, even in your 80s, the heart wants what the heart wants. Age is a number. Hmm. That's all it is. Keeping active is the answer to it all. Hmm. And helping others. Helping others lets you know how gracious it should be because of your own health and your own condition. These are beautiful walks down memory lane made even more beautiful by the lessons of youth, by those who've been there and can teach you how to stay young from experience. Belle Isle has always been the gem of Detroit. Of course, the alternative to getting old is something else. Paula Tutman, Local 4. What a great event. Thank you so much, Paula, for taking us there. Coming up, if you've ever seen a friend have success from a certain diet, but then you didn't see the same results, you might know why. Also, coming up, she went on a shooting rampage at a Detroit gas station. Today, she learned her punishment. We will take you inside the courtroom. Rod. This is the stuff that boyhood summertime dreams are made of. 
playing organized baseball and getting coached by a pro. We'll tell you who it is ahead. All right, looking forward to that. Thank you, Rod. But first, as we go to break, here is your look at how the markets have closed for the day. Coming up, all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. I'm Nick Monticelli in Warren, where four men bust into two different stores, and one of them busting up this ATM. The entire thing is caught on camera. Well, this is the time of year when the baseballs fly and professional dreams take root in those little leaguers' minds all around. Yeah, today a local travel team got a surprise visit from a big leaguer offering some big advice, and our Rod Maloney was there. There isn't a boy out here playing baseball that hasn't wondered whether he had the stuff to turn pro. And today they're going to find out if they have a prayer because they're going to hear from Jose Iglesias of the Detroit Tigers. Christmas in July for these guys who look every bit the part of the big league ball player, but at age 13, they're wide eyed seeing a major leaguer in person for the first time. Jose said playing pro ball is fun and tough and you can act calm, but it is a real job. If you're taking a bat for granted, you know, it's going to be difficult. So you got to grind and compete and, and take the challenge. The team is the Lincoln Park Rails, a very good travel team, and shortstop Isaiah Villarreal discovered a new humility seeing his hero face to face. I was just in shock because at that moment I said I was better than Jose Iglesias, but I don't think I am now. Shortstop Christian Ochoa was nearly speechless. It's so surprising that he's here. I'm excited and everything. <laughs> uh, Can you even believe it? No, I can't believe it. Jose watched as the team split up into infield and outfield drills. He said playing baseball is a sacrifice. It's also a very pessimistic game, considering a 300 hitter can go to the Hall of Fame. And this group of aspiring Hall of Famers put on a good show for him, but they admit it was strangely pressure filled. What, were you nervous playing in front of him? Yeah. Yeah. How'd you do? I think I did okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there's an added bonus to all of this. Not only did they get to talk to Jose Iglesias, but now they're going to see him take batting practice at Comerica Park tonight, and then they're going to be there when the Tigers play the Twins and perhaps win. In Detroit, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Ah, oh, what a dream day. Yeah, that'd be very cool. That would be so much fun. Well, we're talking a little bit of sports. We've talked Tigers, so I want to talk a little Red Wings. I was on Facebook earlier today. Uh -huh. One of my mom friends shared this video of her little boy, Wyatt, who is three. I have to set it up. He just found out he can't play for the Red Wings. Oh, very okay. upset. You want to play hockey for the Red Wings? <laughs> but you have to be older to play for the Red Wings. <laughs> And he goes on, he's like, I just want to play for the Red Wings. That's three-year-old Wyatt from Novi. The video goes on, his brothers kind of try to comfort him, but he's clearly upset. I guess he thought he had a chance. See, that's cute. <laughs> and then when he becomes 12, he's going to be so mad See, at See, I mother. wasn't thinking that. I probably should have thought that before Mom. I put it on my Facebook page, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, true. Wyatt. Maybe you'll get to play for the Red Wings and we can That's do a That's true, and we can use the video again. 15 years. Let's just dream. Yeah. Uh, look at all these 80s out here, at least in the southern part of the area, away from the lakes. It's pretty toasty. Metro's at 87, Ann Arbor's at 86. Even down at Adrian, we've got 86 right now. And then you start moving a little bit further north, a little bit closer to Lake Huron, where we've got that onshore flow. You can see all these 70s showing up here in St. Alac and St. Clair County. In fact, it's a very comfortable 73 right now in Port Huron. Humidity, not a problem anywhere, even in some of those spots that have the warmer temperatures, like Metro Airport at 87. Heat index matching the air temperature because humidity is not an issue. And uh, if you got a shot to see that full moon last night, that sucker was bright. Uh, there's one of the shots that we got in on storm pins and we'll see mostly clear skies tonight. So even though it'll be about 98% full, uh, it's probably still going to be uh, very similar to what we saw last night. Here's a satellite image and there's just not a whole lot to look at cloud wise. There's a little bit of stuff out here from Chicago South and that's not going to be a player in our forecast. So mostly clear skies tonight and then we get through the day tomorrow with slightly warmer temperatures. Don't really think that we'll see much of a humidity issue tomorrow, but there is a slight chance that we could see a thunderstorm as uh, we get closer to about sunset Wednesday night. I think most of us are going to miss it and a lot of us are going to stay completely dry. 
Then the humidity starts becoming more noticeable on Wednesday night. 62 will be our low temperature. Skies mostly clear and highs tomorrow. 87 is what we're calling it. So in some of those areas that are closer to Lake Huron, this is obviously going to be a little bit uh, warmer than what you saw today. But for those areas in the southern half, very similar to today's highs. And then here come the 90s Thursday through the upcoming weekend. And look at these heat index readings. Probably getting to triple digits here on Friday and Saturday and at least a couple scattered thunderstorm shots, especially as we get into Sunday. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. In good health, when it comes to the best diet, it's not one size fits all. A new study in mice suggests our response to various diets really depends on our individual genetics. That means the diet that works so well for your friend may not yield the same results for you. Experts say in the future, it may be possible to identify which people will respond best to which diet. For now, it's a matter of trial and error and recognizing there is not one optimal diet for everybody. Head first at four, she was the most famous bridesmaid in the world. Now she's become the bride. Details on a royal engagement news. And up next, she was caught on camera going on a shooting rampage at a Detroit gas station. Today, she learned if she'll be headed to prison. This story was trending for days when the surveillance video came out of a woman dressed as a cowgirl going on a shooting spree at a Detroit gas station. Well, today, that woman, 20-year-old Shamika Burton, received her punishment for that shooting. She was convicted on multiple charges, including assault with intent to murder. That conviction carries a prison sentence of 10 to 20 years. We told you about this story yesterday. It was trending then, and it still is a big story this afternoon. The World Anti-Doping Agency was calling for Russia to be banned from next month's Olympics because of past cheating. Well, today, the International Olympic Committee responded. So far, they're not taking that recommendation. The IOC said today it will, quote, explore the legal options with regard to a collective ban of all Russian athletes. They may also ban certain individual Russian athletes, but not the entire team. So stay tuned. Well, that's why I'm right. I mean, that's what's kind of confusing. But I'm, you can't just do a whole ban of everyone if you don't have the whole proof. You would think not. You would think not, but there's always drama at the Olympics, you know. <laughs> Speaking of the Olympics, Pizza Hut's getting in that Olympic spirit with this new patriotic pizza. It's two feet long. You see the box there, Go USA. Uh, it's called the Big Flavor Dipper. Sort of looks like an Olympic pool, I guess. Um, it comes with the box, like we said, that says Go USA. Lots of folks talking about that one. Also, this story is trending. I didn't know it was an issue, but apparently it will. It is. Starbucks blocking porn content on its Wi-Fi. Also joining McDonald's. I guess both chains are implementing filtering technology that will block customers from accessing porn sites in their restaurants. The move comes after pressure from anti-pornography groups. Some royal wedding news for you this afternoon. Take a look at this. We all remember her, Pippa Middleton. She's engaged. Pippa, I'm sorry, Pippa Middleton. She is the sister of Duchess Kate, who became so well known during Kate's wedding to Britain's Prince William. Pippa is marrying hedge fund manager James Matthews sometime next year. Now that wedding's going to be very fancy. Yeah, somebody's paying for it. Yeah, pretty dress I bet too. Mm -hmm. Head first at four. Oh. Oh, look at that photo. That's you and me at Hobnobble Gobble. Remember that last yes. year? Well, Total we're going to break some news. There. I don't know if you know, but in a couple minutes, we're going to break news of the big name talent that just signed to headline this year's event. I'll give you a hint. He has a very popular song out right now. Open up the champagne. All right, finally, first at four, Thanksgiving is, look at this, 127 days away, seven That's hours, it? 32 minutes. But that's uh, the time, actually, I should say, for this year's Hobnobble Gobble. Remember that big party we that's hosted right. last year? Comes mm. earlier. It's, it's a huge fundraiser that helps pay for America's Thanksgiving Parade. And today we learned who's going to be performing at the event. Welcome to my house, baby, take control. That's what uh, Karen was singing before the break. I was lip syncing it. That was Flo Rida, <laughs> and he's going to be coming November 18th. Ford Field will be his house. We'll be popping the oh. champagne with him.
Florida has sold over 80 million records, and the parade company is pleased to announce that he's going to be this year's headline performer. That's a big name. A big I got to give them credit. But at the same time, Hot Novel Gobble keeps getting bigger and bigger, so we're getting bigger names. I have to up my tux game. Ooh. Well, right in the house. Open up with the champagne. Pop. <laughs> All right. Well, Gar, thanks so much for spending your afternoon with us. We're back in a half hour. Inside Edition is next. After I